and welcome to Overtime on the Ice. I'm Jenna Harner, joined in studio by Dan Kovacevic. Phil Bork joining us from the road. Guys, there are three games left in the regular season. It is so crazy to believe. I feel like we were just sitting down talking about, you know, the first <laughs> yeah. half of the season. Here we are. Here's a look at these three, the Flyers, the Oilers, and the Blue Jackets to wrap things all up. With three games remaining, what do you guys want to see and need to see from this Penguins team? Well, I mean, there's no bigger priority this time of year and in this circumstance than just staying healthy. Yeah. And there's a balance to that because you also want to have your legs moving. You don't want to get into bad habits. So you want to skate. I think it would look a lot like the game in Detroit where, you, you know, you, you put out whatever it is that you have to put out in order to get the result. The Penguins did that. They didn't stray from their system too much. They didn't make dumb plays. Go ahead and execute against these teams. But hey, also, Phil, you know, we can also see some goaltending, right? Yeah, we might see Louis Domingue. I, I think that in the back-to-back -back situation uh, with uh, playing in Detroit on Saturday, Sunday in Philly, that we're going to get the 30-year-old silly cider, uh, the guy that catches with the wrong hand. And Louis Domingue, as we remember, on January 15th, Boy, did he spin mm. a web against the San Jose Sharks. He was brilliant, stopping 40, a 41 piece of vulcanized rubber that came his way. If we get another performance like that, I think everybody will feel a little better about this duo, which it looks like the more we hear about Tristan Jari, or the less we hear, I should say, uh, on just how good he's doing, uh, looks like we might start the playoffs with Casey and Louie. And that could give Penguins fans definitely a lot of optimism moving into the postseason, especially if DeSmith coming off oh, that yeah. performance in Boston. You know, yeah. you finish out the regular season on a high note. Of course, you want to be playing your best hockey going into the postseason. Now, especially those guys. Especially those yeah. guys, knowing that the team is calling upon them. You're stepping up, the next man up mentality that this team has taken game after game this season. We joke, you know, when will we ever see a healthy lineup? And I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully at some point in the playoffs, we do see that. Speaking of playoffs, it's looking more and more like there are three realistic opponents for the Penguins to see whether it's the New York Rangers, the Carolina Hurricanes, or the Florida Panthers. I guess this is one of those, you know, pick the lesser of three evils type of situation here, but if you guys, you know, schedule makers, whatever, if you could pick who this Penguins team is going to face in the playoffs, who's the best option here? Because you can look at all three and say, oh gosh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if I, you ask me to pick one, Jenna, <laughs> I, I'm definitely taking the Carolina Hurricanes, mm -hmm. and I acknowledge what they've done, but I've got several reasons for that. One is that their goaltending is uncertain. Frederick Anderson uh, was not available for their game Saturday and could be out week to week with an injury, according to Rod Brindamore. Uh, that's not great. The Hurricanes aren't going to punish you or wear you down. They, they're very similar to the Penguins in that sense, meaning they're not physical. They can get a little bit nasty, a little bit cheap, especially with the sticks, but nothing that's going to throw you off your game or anything like that. Oh, and one other thing. If the Penguins face the Hurricanes, they get home ice advantage for all seven games. Do not underestimate <laughs> the influence of the of the. Pittsburghers and former Pittsburghers that are in the North Carolina region, they will take that building hostage en masse. <laughs> yeah, that's some great points about Carolina. I, I don't think it'll be as physical and nasty as it could be against the Rangers and, and possibly the Florida Panthers. And you're right, with Freddie Anderson out, that's a, that's a real game changer for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so ironic that Anderson's week to week, Jari's week to week, so... Uh, who knows which goaltender will get back quicker. But Carolina's got a bunch of guys, young guys, that I don't know if they're quite ready for playoff-type hockey. Uh, it's a different animal, as you know, and the Penguins historically have played really well down in Raleigh. But if it's the Rangers, I think that's going to be a long series, a physical, demanding series, a lot of nasty. And Igor Shesterkin could be the wild card there. Just to quickly jump forward to the Florida Panthers, if we continue to talk about goaltending, Sergei Bobrovsky oh, is a guy Bob. the Penguins have had a ton of success <laughs> against ever since he left the Philadelphia Flyers in Columbus and now down in Florida. And listen, Mike Matheson used to be a Florida Panther before. He could be a wild card player, but you're, you're right. They've got some high-end talent that they're scoring goals at will. But Mike Sullivan says it all the time. It's really hard to score your way to a championship when it comes playoff time. Not against Bob in the playoffs, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you do that Ron Francis slap shot from center red just to test him in the opening minute, you know? 
I do <laughs> like your point, too, about Matheson potentially kind of being a little bit of a you know, game changer here because when we talked with him, I think it was a week ago or something yeah. along those lines, he said, you know, he's never won a playoff series in his entire career. That's because he was there. That, exactly, because <laughs> he was there. And you could just sense that, you know, eagerness, that intensity that he's going to bring. I definitely uh, could see him being a game changer, no doubt. Phil, but. he's become such an impact player, hasn't he? Yeah. He really has. He's he has taken off the rough edges and give Todd Reardon a lot of credit. Yes, that, sir. You know, when yes. we highlighted uh, earlier, we highlighted some special goals by the Penguins. They were Mike Matheson quick ups, and he has really, really shown the confidence, shown the ability to be an impactful player, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. Well, when we're talking this time next week, we will be talking about that potential playoff matchup. Again, <laughs> let the excitement begin. For Dan Kovacevic and Phil Bork, I'm Jenna Harner. Thanks so much for joining us on Overtime on the Ice.